Hello everybody, my name is Jacob Collier and I'm a musician. I've been challenged today to explain one simple concept in five levels of increasing complexity. My topic? Harmony. I'm positive that everybody can leave this video with some understanding at some level. Bodhi, how's it going? Good. Cool. So do you know what harmony is? It's when people sing together and it and it sounds nice. Yeah, that's 100% correct. Have you ever heard a song called Amazing Grace? No. It's a good one. The melody on its own just goes... Dum, dum, da, 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 da. That melody on its own is kind of lonely, right? And no one really knows how it feels. So which one did you prefer? The second one. Awesome. And, and why did you prefer that one? Because it sounds better. Yeah, oh, that's great. I can decide how I want this melody to feel. And the more notes there are, the more exciting it is. That's what musical harmony is. Does that make sense? <laughs> You're the best. Thank you. Have you ever heard of harmony? Yes. Okay, so what do you think harmony is? I think basically it's like one person has the lower voice and like a girl usually has the higher voice. Yeah. And then they blend it together. I know? like it. That's absolutely correct. Okay. Harmony is about injecting melody with emotion yeah. so that ultimately you leave home and you return home and you've learned something along the way. Yeah. So a nice place to start is with the idea of a triad. A triad is a three-part harmony, basically. So that's a triad, you know. So this triad is called C major. Right? Okay. So have you ever heard of this idea of like major chords and minor chords? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is C major, yeah? And then this is C, C minor. So yeah. the feelings are different, right? Yeah, it feels like dark and spooky. Yeah, like this one's dark and spooky. Happy. And how does, how does this one make you feel then? Happy right. and well, joyful. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So in Amazing Grace, if you start with F, you know, if I go, like, where am I right now? I don't know where I am. And my job is to get back home, but to make it to, to make this chord make sense. Yeah. You know, so I might go, I was Thanks. surprised. Oh, that was cheers, like Cameron. happened. My job as a harmonizer is to find that narrative and make it make sense. That was interesting because cool. I didn't think that that would work together. Right. Because there were two completely different sounds, but then like it just made it happen and yeah. it just was like pow. Amazing. That's magic. Great. Essentially, what harmony is, is it's like a language, right? And so, as with any language, the more words you're capable of speaking in a language, the more you can say. Right, so in harmony, this might be how many notes you can think to add to a chord to make it feel a different way. Have you ever heard of the circle of fifths? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. On one side, we have a lot of the notes which make us feel brighter, you know, like these kinds of, these really bright sounds. And the other side is a lot more to do with the darkness of a key center. So we're home in F, but imagine we're taking a quick visit to B flat, but then the sun comes out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What notes would you suggest I add? F. F is a great one. Yeah, and if we keep going in that direction. Yeah, uh, C. Yeah. And then G. You got it. Yeah. 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 So this is really, this is like a, a, a gleaming glade or something, mm -hmm. you know. Let's play a, this tune Amazing Grace. Let's play it in its simplest form. Yeah. All right, so we're going to start on F, right? Yeah. So you say, I was. F, yeah. B flat, yeah. F. Yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. Let's try one more version where we add some colors. All right. So let's visit the B flat with a bit more imagination yeah. just to see how things feel. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's do it. So it's F major seven, but it's over A. Which is F seven over A. B flat major seven with an A and a G in it. F major seven with an E and a D and a G in it. <laughs> D minor seven with a G in it. C sus, oh, minor, nice. B flat major, G7, F sharp major 7, home. Yeah. I like that. So what harmony does is just gives us even more tools to tell those stories. Cool, yeah. Nice, man. Awesome. <laughs> One nice emotional device when it comes to harmony is just thinking about how to arrive somewhere. 
-hmm. You know, it can be so sparse, it can be so rich, and it can be really emotional. So this idea of the overtone and undertone in the harmonic series, um, how much do you know about this? Only until I started listening to singing, like barbershop quartet, and and as I was a violinist as well, Great. then I finally understood the idea where the overtone series came from. That if a bunch of singers were to nail a chord or have it perfectly tuned, uh, the overtones you would hear a tone that necessarily wasn't being produced by one of the yeah. singers. The amazing thing about harmony is that it, it it exists in nature. So take the harmonic series of the note F, for example. Okay. You have the octave, and then the fifth, and the fourth, and then the. And that's a little bit sharp, but that's fine. And then the intervals get increasingly small. Beneath that note, you have the undertone series, which essentially is like a reflection of something in the same way that when a tree grows in nature, you have the branches which go upwards and the roots which go downwards. So it's quite a nice thing to think about this being the key center, the, 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 the floor, the ground, and then these two different directions of ways in which it can express itself and the differences in, in the sensations with that. Lots of the time, I think, when it comes to reharmonization or harmonization, people think that the solution to the problems come when we add more notes. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? I think that people forget that you can work with the notes you already have by just rearranging them. Mm. Just the simple idea of inversion, you know, inversion of the simple triad of F major. So I once was lost and now I found was Now, how, how home do I want to go here, you know? Is there another verse to come? Right. Because I can, do, I can delay the gratification of going home, first of all, just by using inversions, even before we add notes to the chord. One thing that I was very joyful to discover is that every single melody note works with every single bass note. Hmm. So... You can demonstrate that? Yeah. So this is the note F. Yeah. F major, F minor, mm -hmm. G flat major seven, G flat diminished, G flat minor major seven, G minor seven, G sus, G seven, G seven sharp eleven. Oh, dude. And then G seven with a flat thirteen, right? A flat sus, A flat major seven, A flat major seven sharp five with a sharp eleven. Essentially, what that demonstrates is that every note and every bass note are compatible. So once we realise this, it's like, that's great. Now what should we do? What, what, <laughs> yeah. what should we? What should we? How? What, what am I supposed to do? do right. And sometimes the paralyzing thing when it comes to arranging, there are too many options. Too many things are possible. So that's when it becomes super, super important to be aware of what you want to try and say emotionally. You know. But what about negative harmony, the dark side? So essentially, the way I'd, I'd apply negative harmony would be this idea of polarity. You know, between the undertone series and the overtone series, or you know, the one side and the other side, the perfect and the plagal. The feeling of a minor plagal cadence resolving is so moving, you know? And it's just, it's a good alternative to something like... It's funny, it, you know, you doing that makes something in a major key sound like kind of a wistful, sad song. Right. You know, and I, you, you change the feeling of a, what otherwise would, you know, if you would tell a kid that this is a major song, it should be happy. I'm exactly, easy, yeah. Easy. No, for sure. <laughs> and, and, you know, F major can be something you arrive in from, if you arrive in F major from D flat, yeah. then it's like the sun's come up. Right. But if you arrive in F major from A major, it's like the sun's gone in. So it's a, there's, there's a lot about context, I think. Once you have a language, it's about using it and applying it in those emotional ways. I think that's what makes the difference. All right. A lot of people will see you as somebody who's drank in harmony their whole life. They've seen so much harmony, heard so much harmony. How do you make the choices? There's so much that's possible when you know stuff. <laughs> how, do you, how do you have the courage to make a choice? It comes from just your life experience. Mm. And, and that moves you in a certain direction. How it gets expressed many times is a complete surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I find it fascinating in music to think about, you know, say I arrive in a place, if I'm going, say I'm going to D flat major, and there was something you once taught me, you taught me this song called Don't Follow the Crowd. Oh, yeah. And there's that chord. It's not a dominant chord, but it functions as a dominant chord. Oh, but yeah. it doesn't matter because you're still going to the place you're going to. Right, right, and right. It's right. something like... Um, right, 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 yeah. right. So this chord being like a major seven, with the right. sharp five and a natural nine. Like there's no dominant thing. Right, right. But at that moment, I'm coming from here and I'm, I want to forge some, some solution. Yeah. I get myself in a situation. Yeah. 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 Right. And then that haunted me for days. Because, <laughs> you know, 
I just wouldn't think to use that chord in that situation. Yeah. And there it was. And yeah, you know, if you read the rule book, it's, that's not in it. Yeah, and it, this is what I learned from the great Chris Anderson. Chris Anderson, yeah, yeah. yeah. The idea of going to a D-flat chord, normally it does a dominant, like the A-flat seventh. <laughs> but back in the 20s, they also used to do things like... Oh, yeah. You know, so it's, it's always coming... Yeah. Coming yeah. from just just below the, the key from C yeah. with a seventh. Yeah. And, w and we don't normally say a C seventh and, a, and an A flat seventh right. are, are related. Yeah. You know, because some of the, so many of the notes are different. Because <laughs> you got this and you got a You got it exactly G. right. <laughs> it gets gnarly, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. But if you voice that correctly, oh, yeah. then you're safe. You can get all, all of those notes. You can get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other thing uh, that I, I like that uh, we both do on, on occasion is to be on the chord we want to arrive at with the bottom part of our structure and the chord before the arrival chord, to have that on top. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Know? Yeah. 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 Right, right, right. Yeah. Something right. like that. And that's not because, like, emotionally, it's, sort of, it's almost like, I'm here, I'm arriving here, mm -hmm. but if the bass note is the same, it's like this inevitability about it. It's like I was there right. all along. I love yeah, thinking about these. And it makes, a, makes a, a pull. Yeah, yeah. Happen. It's, it's like one thing is moving in one direction, one thing is arrived, so it's this tension and it's right, glorious. Right. I love thinking about these things emotionally just because that's a feeling. I know that feeling in my life. Music is not different from life. No. You know, and I, I think that's probably the greatest attraction to those of us who play music. Yeah. Was there ever a point in your life when you were younger where you felt like you had consistently fell back into the same habits? You'd find, oh, oh yeah. man, I'm not going to play this same thing again. I had a really great experience when I was working with Miles Davis. I felt like I was in a rut playing the same stuff, and I was getting depressed because of it. And Miles said something to me. I thought he said, don't play the butter notes, right? And so I thought, what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> so you thought he said butter? Butter notes, and He said right. bottom, but you thought he said butter. Yeah. Wow. And so I started thinking, okay, oh, what could butter be? What is butter? Then I started thinking, what are the obvious notes, for example, in a chord? The obvious notes are the third and the seventh. Hmm. So I said, oh, maybe if I leave those out. It changed everything for me from that moment on. Yeah. <laughs> I got more applause that, for that solo <laughs> than I did the whole week. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I wouldn't play the voicings I play today if that had not happened. That's amazing. You know? I've been using this tune, Amazing Grace. Oh, right. Okay. And so we could play a bit of that if you want to. And okay. We could talk about some stuff. I'll be doing an F.
Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Herbie. That was a good hit. Yeah, thank you.